Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling. Our coverage of the sport continues. We have a very special guest at the Nike Hot Seat today. He's a former two-time All-American and University of Maryland Wrestling alum, Jimmy Sheptock, class of 2014. He joins us now in the Nike Hot Seat. How are you, Jimmy? Good. How are you doing? Or do I call you James now that you graduated? I don't even know I'm, how that works. Yeah, you still good, Jimmy. I'm still good on Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, still good. Well, uh, Kerry McCoy told me that uh, quite possibly you'd be rejoining the staff, and, and he did not blow that thing up at all. It's true. Uh, back with the Terrapins this time as an assistant coach. Uh, after a two-year stint at Drexel in Philly, first of all, better parking situation. That had to have been a draw. <laughs> Yeah, parking did take uh, quite some time some mornings, but uh, if you got there early enough, you were good to go. It would uh, take I, you I, as long to park in Philadelphia at Drexel as it does for you to drive to work in uh, in Maryland. It's actually, it took long. It took longer. Um, <laughs> and actually, the the one the one good thing is I did learn how to parallel park really really good. Yeah, I can imagine. That was that was a skill that was lacking in in high school and in a little bit in college, but I became very, very good at it. You are well known for the moniker that was bestowed upon you by a man with a very big voice. And he'd always want to see a headlock by Sheptock. And you know <laughs> who I'm talking about, right? The Maryland Heckler. Uh, I think uh, it'd be hard to forget him. Will he develop, or do you have an idea that he might develop uh, some kind of a, a chant for you as you are now on the coaching staff? I don't know. I... The uh, headlock Shep talk has been so iconic, it'd be hard to change it, I think. So we'll, we'll see if he comes up with something new. I might have to go on a T-shirt. I don't know if you saw recently a posting of uh, uh, Slater from uh, Saved by the Bell I put up. I saw this T-shirt that said, fact, A.C. Slater almost wrestled in Iowa. I think there should be a headlock Shep talk T-shirt. That uh, could be. Sold. I might have to get working on that. Yeah. I might have to copyright that. I'm talking about big time fundraiser <laughs> for Karen McCoy and the Mighty Terrapin. Well, let's get down to business. Uh, this this just doesn't happen overnight. The idea of going back to your alma mater to be a coach. How did it all happen for you? Um, Kerry reached out. He just told, he told me that there'd be an opening on on staff, and uh, you know, naturally, I was, um, you know. In, into the position so you know obviously I have a good relationship with Kerry and um, you know University of Maryland is where uh, you know I, I've grown up I mean I, I've been in college my girlfriend you know her, her she went to college at University of Maryland so you know looking back you know it was it seemed like you know it was the right place to be so University of Maryland it was good to you obviously you've got fantastic uh, facilities and surroundings there everybody seems to be in an athletic state of mind uh, you talk about the opportunity opportunities are often afforded to those who want to make their own opportunity you did so with hard work dedication and and what we call a tremendous record um, if, if I say uh, cement mixer <laughs> what does that do for you does that get you all charged up uh, well, like the headlock, I wasn't a very big cement mixer, but, you know, looking back, obviously I've, I'm from Northampton High School and that, you know, that's, that's where it was created and, you know, I've got strong ties to that community and, you know, the tradition there is awesome and, uh, yeah, it does get me pumped up and gets me thinking about, you know, them having a state champ this year and some young guys coming up. So, you know, another sense of pride there. Did you ever find yourself in the position of being able to employ a cement mixer and you not knowing how you got there? <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't really try them that that often. Um, you know, at camps, I do show them a lot, uh, just because some of the coaches are like, "Oh, we know you're from there," and really, it is one of the first moves they teach. So, you know, I do have a, a somewhat of a basis there. I just, you know, I, I stuck to what was high percentage. <laughs> Jimmy Sheptock joins us. You helped guide the Dragons to their most dual meet victories, uh, which was a total of 10 since the 2008-2009 season, uh, which included a six-match win streak to end the year. You guys finished the year on a high note. Was it tough to leave the, the Mighty Dragons of Drexel? Um, no, I mean, I think we had a great team. Um, Matt and Zach have done a, a great job of getting the right kids in, and you know, it, obviously, it takes a little bit of time for uh, 
for things to come around. And I think I came in at the right time and was able to help some of the guys, obviously. But uh, you know, they had a good basis, and it was good to be on staff with those guys and then have kids that were on the team that were you know willing to work hard and also professionally driven. I think one of the best things for a young coach to do is to be totally immersed day to day operations. It's huge, um, and I know you you got a big heaping help helping a uh, big plate full of day to day ops at Drexel. Uh, do you feel that that helped you grow as a coach? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, they uh, showed me the ropes, and you know that kind of hit the ground running with recruiting and some of the other aspects of marketing and whatnot. I was also finishing my master's degree in uh, sports management, so you know it helped me out that a lot of the modules and courses that I was taking kind of went along with um, you know some of the stuff that was involved in athletics. So you know that that also helps. Did it surprise you when you got to Drexel to find out that the athletes could actually earn a living and go to and go to school there? <laughs> well, I, w- I was actually recruited there in in high school, and then I had a couple of my friends from Northampton go there. I didn't really completely understand the co op when I was in in um, high school, but when I when I've been there the last two years, you, you really get to see how beneficial it is, and it was it was really interesting you know we kind of had to change our schedule around just to get guys to be able to work out because they had work and you know sometimes you got to learn to multitask and that's a that's part of life you know it it is about multitasking and if we can get past the idea that wrestling is job one it is a job that we do and some of us like you do it very well as a matter of fact Kerry mccoy said that uh, not only is he thrilled to have you back there He's one of the best wrestlers to have ever worn a Terrapin uniform and will be and provide a great example for our guys. Kerry coached you. Having him coach you and have him, him you know, uh, give you those types of compliments, what does that mean to you? I mean, it's, it's really nice to hear. Obviously, you know, I, I put a lot of time and effort into here, but, you know, and, in, in, you know, vice versa, Kerry, you know, gave me a lot here uh he helped me along the way and you know there were hiccups and bumps in the road along the way and he stuck by my side so it's uh it's nice when you have someone that is really that um that close with you that you can work with and um you know going forward just looking for for that next guy to come in here and you know find find that next bond with the the student athlete because i think that's really important um you know, in coaching that you have a good relationship with your student athletes. And, you know, that's what Kerry did with me. And that's what I'm going to be trying to do with some of these guys. I want our listeners to, and, and viewers to close your eyes, open your ears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three-time ACC champ, three-time NCAA qualifier, two-time All-American at 74 and 84 out of Northampton, PA, 129 and 20 all-time record as a Terp, had a perfect 51 and 0 dual match season with 67 total bonus point victories. Um, it's perhaps one of the greatest individual runs, and in, if it's not uh, the greatest, it's definitely in the top five. But in Maryland wrestling history, did you have fun at the time? It sure looked like you're having a ball. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think anytime you're having success and you're, you're trusting the process, it, it's fun, and you. Uh, when you're winning, you, you don't have to really worry about some of the other things that are going on. You know, when you, you start losing, you get in a little bit of slump. So, yeah, that senior year was really fun. Unfortunately, it got stopped at the end. But, you know, things happen. There's there's better guys out there. And, uh, you know, that's that's the way the, the ball rolls sometimes, you know. Coming out of high school, though, did you know that there are better guys out there? Did you think you were that lion killer that you could go out there and face anybody? Just bring it. Well, I think, you know, coming to college, it's everyone tells you that, oh, man, it's really tough. And, you know, we don't know if some guys are going to make it and whatnot. So I was a little nervous coming in. And, um, you know, once I got in the college room, I think, every, you know, for the most part, I'd say a lot of wrestlers you know, get get beat up on the first week and then you kind of adapt. And so, I, I you know, I wrestled with some, some guys on our team that were – Multiple time All Americans, Hudson Taylor, Mike Letts, Josh Asper. Um, so I, I had a, a tough, tough uh, first month or so, but I st- started figuring it out. And then we started going to some open tournaments. And um, 
you know, I was competing very well, and you know, I think that's where I got a lot of the confidence. So, you know, I have a close match with a really good guy, beat a really good guy. So, I think that's where um, you know I started really gaining confidence and saying, okay, you know, this is uh, this is something possible and something that uh, I can do. Hudson Taylor, you mentioned Hudson Taylor. You're not going to find a more kind individual on the planet. Um, talk about a big heart and a brave, a brave young man. Uh, just an outstanding leader, but uh, you brought him up, and let me just finish putting the icing on that cake. I got a lot of admiration for Hudson Taylor. You became the first ever Maryland wrestler to obtain the number one seat at the NCAA championships and a number one national ranking. I mean, that just tells me how much hard work you put. Sure, there's going to be perhaps some natural ability, but when did you become... Uh, Jimmy Sheptock, the guy that could possibly win it all. When, when, how old were you when you started wrestling? Um, I well, I started wrestling in uh, the kindergarten, so a long time ago. My grandfather started the youth wrestling program where I lived, and um, my my dad wrestled, my uncle wrestled Lehigh. So I was, uh, and I was stuck at wrestling at a young age. <laughs> Now, I would say not only stuck, but you were encouraged, i got to believe, by your family because family understood wrestlers and the wrestling way of life, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now, I, yeah, I shouldn't say stuck. I was, you know, I was pushed into wrestling, and, I, you know, I liked it. Um, and obviously, I think my, my parents and my family knew, okay, this guy is only going to be so tall. He's going to be, you know, this size. He's probably, you know, if we're looking to college, we got to be starting – Think about wrestling. <laughs> How tall are you, Jimmy? About five nine. Not 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 a tall cat. Not a tall cat. No. Nope. But, but at the same time, you were able to bring it like a big guy would. Uh, <laughs> you had great speed. Um, you know, you're able to get to the bar and order a beer before most. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. That's that ability to change levels. Mm -hmm. uh, you you made it for most of us. You made it look so easy. And, and most of us, I think, also know how difficult it is to get to that, you know, that position uh, where you make it look easy. Uh, countless hours. I got to ask you this tough question because having risen to the top of the mountain, having been as good as you were as a competitor, are there some disappointments at the end? Um, I mean, obviously, you look back at your career and you always think, "Man, I should have just—I should have done a little bit more." Um, you know, why did I do this my freshman year? Why did I do this my sophomore year? Why wasn't I listening to coach all the time? And you know, I think that's easy to say. Um, you know, looking back, um, I mean, really, I, I can't say I have any regrets because I can't—I can't go back and change them. And I'm not—I'm not a person that dwells on things that happen. I kind of look towards the future and you know what we can do next. Um, cause I, I just think that's, that's the best way you're going to strive for success that, um, you know, maybe now, now I know, you know, what that is. That's something I can tell some of these guys on the team, um, that are struggling. Hey, you know, I've been there, I've done that. I know, know how you're feeling, but you know, let's, let's change that. Let's do something about it. You can still have success even though you haven't had it yet. Um, and I think that's a, a reason why, you know, Carrie wanted me to come on staff cause I, you know, I've, I can really relate to some of these guys. I guess, and, and, and this may be selfish on my part, because I didn't want to see you stop competing, <laughs> okay? I really didn't. I still don't. I, I still, deep in my heart, think Gable can go out and wrestle. I still think Kerry McCoy <laughs> can go out and wrestle. You know, because that's, at, at some point in my mind, it kind of stops. You guys stopped aging you, you, you know, the, the other guys stopped coming up at 16, 17, 18 years old. But uh, was there ever a thought in your mind that you might continue on uh, in, uh, after college and continue as a, a freestyle artist or even, dare I say, a Greco guy? <laughs> well, I don't think Greco is in the cards. I'm not much of an upper body guy. But, um, you know, I started thinking about it. And um, I, I was in school. And, uh, you know, once when I was at Drexel, they started the PRTC and, you know, things were going pretty well. So I was thinking about, you know, possibly throwing my hand in there. I, I mean, I still work out daily and, you know, get in the room, wrestle with the guys. So I'm, I'm in pretty good shape still. So 
not ruling it 100% out of the cards, but you know, I think I've got a, a lot going on here right now, and I've got to you know start figuring out what what we're doing, how we're going to do it, and how we're going to get uh, you know you know our program on the rise. I got you, Kerry. Uh, Coach McCoy recently took uh, a group of kids down to Lima, Peru, and uh, they did quite well. The U.S. Cadet Freestyle and Greco-Roman squads uh, competed uh, at the Pan American Championships. I mean, they did very, very well. Yeah, I, I was, I was uh, following along. So, you might understand this next question: um, How closely are you going to watch Coach McCoy? Because dude can absolutely coach, especially when he's got all these studs, and all they want is a little bit of leadership, a little bit of encouragement. You know, some attaboys. But to bring home all those medals and rule Lima, Peru, uh, July 1st through the 3rd, just recently, that's that's amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously very close. And, you know, I'm a student to the to the coaches that I, I've been a part of. So, obviously, when, when I was wrestling here, you know, I was, you know, trying to listen to what Kerry was saying, the techniques. And you know, I was at Drexel, I, you know. I was interested in, you know, how Matt was running the program, how he was doing things technically. So, I mean, I'm, I'm always looking to improve, you know, technique or a certain area because, you know, I think you have to understand that people around you didn't get there just on luck. They, they've done something good and they've been very effective in that area. And I think it's really good to kind of learn off that and, you know, kind of, use that as a step stepping stone of, of how you're going to do it. You've always been one of those, uh, you know, two sided sword guys. You're sharp on both sides. <laughs> and that is that you have a great intellect for the sport. And then you have the physical physicality to be able to back up that intellect. Sometimes <laughs> one goes before the other, but that's what makes your style of wrestling so much fun to watch. I don't know if that's something you can teach, but uh, and dare I ever say devil may care attitude, just go out and throw caution to the wind. But uh, like I said earlier, you made it look easy. Uh, I want to congratulate you on your new job back at your old joint, man. The Terrapins are now going to be uh, uh, very, very much stronger for, for your addition to uh, Kerry McCoy's staff. And this time as an assistant coach, your relationships with the alum, uh, that's, that's only going to serve to help that as well. Are you looking forward to getting? Uh, are you looking forward to getting back to work this time with the uh, Terrapin Colors? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I was accepted. You know, I think July seventh or eighth down here, and I I came down first day. Was working out with some of the guys, and you know, I'm excited to get on the mats, kind of get these guys, you know, going in the right direction. Um, you know, they they've got a good training phase going on right now. Just um. We've been, you know, with Fargo and all these things going on, a lot of recruiting and stuff. So, you know, just in the coach convention, you know, kind of coming together, kind of coming up with our complete game plan. So I'm really excited to see, you know, what what that holds and, and what's what's the next step for us. Jimmy Sheptock has been our guest in the Nike hot seat today. It's always fun to talk to uh, Jimmy. And, Jimmy, I can't wait to see the impact that, that uh, you'll have on the Terrapins this year and in the years to come there in College Park. But for sure, we'll, argue, we'll all be paying attention as uh, you you turn your attention back to the Big Ten and the ter uh, Terrapins at the University of Maryland, man. It's uh, it's always good, man. But this is a very special month because it's Jimmy Shep Talk Month here at <laughs> Takedown. How about that? That sounds like a good month. It is a good month, man. <laughs> it's going to be when you hit August, it's going to be like, what happened to... <laughs> what happened to Chef Talk Month? I don't know. <laughs> Jimmy, thank you so much for taking the time today. I sure appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. Jimmy Chef Talk has been our guest, former two-time All-American, University of American, uh, University of.